Grazie. Signore Ministro, sono realmente molto felice, molto felice di essere con tutti voi qui a Matera, capitale, del, capitale europea della cultura 2019. Vado a fare il mio intervento in inglese. Space for Culture is the title given to this conference. And this title takes formally note of new convergences between disciplines that are too often artificially split. New convergences between the economic, industrial, technological, academic, cultural and institutional worlds. Space for culture, space data to serve culture. And let's be very clear on this, neither culture by space data nor algorithms to determine how culture should look like. Space data are a tool, I insist on it, and cannot or should not steer any culture policy. As stated by the great Israeli thinker Arari, in his most recent book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, dataism should not be the new world religion. Data should just be a tool in order to have a larger view of what culture could bring us. Because culture is the fabric of our lives and societies all over the world. And culture is a principle that goes far beyond of what is usually qualified as being cultural. So is culture linked to climate? And culture will largely be affected by climate change. Let just for a minute think about landscapes and how they are shaping our environment, how the harmonious synergies between soil and soul, between nature and what man creates, are a dimension of our human being, of our culture being. Culture is an essential link in the European civilization value chain. And culture is connected to curiosity. It prevents stagnation, complacency, and lack of ambition. Our European culture project is encompassing all dimensions of our living together. Culture makes exchanges between European peoples possible and it allows, through such exchanges, access to the imagination and dreams of those who share our Union. The European Union is in essence a culture project. In that sense, it plays an essential role, enabling us all to come closer to what I would call the European spirit a spirit which is our European supplement d'âme. What forges our European spirit, our European identity, is expressed in our culture, in the way we engage in dialogue, in how we share and exchange, discover and rediscover, interpret and reinterpret our cultural heritage. In the same way that culture is the fabric of our lives and societies all over the world, cultural heritage is, especially for Europe, the cornerstone of our civilization. We, the peoples of Europe, are bound by a common cultural heritage that we celebrate this year all over the Union. And that heritage, far from denying diversity is the outcome of exchanges and sharing. 
a common cultural heritage that must be kept alive in order to assimilate it better and thus better develop it. Using the past as a shore from which we can build a bridge towards the other shore, which is our future. And as I stated before, culture or cultural heritage are connected with curiosity, with what we could call innovation, technology, or even applied creation. Culture and cultural heritage are always looking for progress, also for technological progress. And in their turn, technology and creativity can help us to protect and to make better use of our cultural heritage. And so we have come full circle. That's why our space endeavor, which is fully part of a technological progress, is linked with European culture. That's why the exploitation of space data is linked with cultural heritage. Our motto could be more culture for a better space policy and more space policy, or if you prefer, more space data for a better culture policy. Let's look at the side of the motto that is interesting us more, particularly during this conference, more space data for a better culture policy. And let me give three examples of how space data and their conversion into usable information are an essential tool to discover, to restore, and to better monitor cultural heritages. First example, to discover cultural heritages. Indeed, these recent years we have experienced how remote sensing technology, including satellite imaging, is revealing the traces of past civilizations that have been hiding in plain sight. Just to mention one example, in the year 2014, David Mattingly, an archaeologist at the University of Leicester in the UK, discovered that many Garamantin sites showed up in stunning details in satellite photos. The Garamantes, being a civilization that started to decline after the year 700 of the Common Era. By analyzing the satellite images in an area of about 2,500 square kilometers in the Sahara of southern Libya, he located 158 major settlements, 184 cemeteries, 30 square kilometers of fields, plus a variety of irrigation systems. Second example, this time not to discover, but to help to restore cultural heritage. The Islamic State, that is as to me, neither Islamic nor state, carried out in recent months intentional damage to the world's cultural heritage, in Palmyra, for instance. Earth observation data provided important information to access, to assess, sorry, the damage in such hardly accessible areas. In this framework, automated image processing is a useful technology to speed up the analysis if a fast response is desired. Third and last example, but I could go on for hours, I won't. Not to discover or to restore, but this time to better monitor cultural heritage. Example better, know, better known as the Volterra case, an Italian town of great historical interest, which includes a 2.6 kilometer long Etruscan medieval wall enclosure. During the year 2014, two impressive collapses occurred on this wall enclosure. Following these events, a monitoring campaign was carried out by means of remote sensing techniques, such as 
spaceborne radar interferometry. The outcomes of this work demonstrated the usefulness of different remote sensing technologies for deriving information in risk prevention and management. These three examples show that thanks to what I have called the space tool, we are in a position to better defend and promote the various cultures around the world. And when I say we, I mean in particular the European Space Agency, which vision is to enable the maximum benefit of data for science, society, and economic growth. To this end, the agency has developed scientific satellite systems to advance the scientific agenda related to the understanding of the Earth system, a scientific agenda which has served as breeding ground for all Earth observation operational programs, including Copernicus. For several decades, the agency has been providing the user community with access to data from its own satellites, from third-party satellites, and no, from the Sentinel satellites of the European Union program Copernicus, Oriana already referred to it. Thanks to Copernicus, the European Union becomes one of the biggest data providers in the world. The Sentinel satellites collecting continuously data, ensuring sustainability and also continuity. As the former president of the European Council, Herman van Rompuy, put it a few years ago, data and space data, which are part of it, are the new oil of our economy. And I would add that they are also the new cornerstones of our cultural heritage. But space data are not, on their own, a useful tool to enhance cultural heritage. And the enormous wealth of data is a challenge for traditional data processing and handling. More and more application should be platform-based in the future. And to reach the users, the cultural world, it's important that data providers and platform operators join forces. That's why ESA has set up an Earth Observation Innovation Europe system which aims at building a network of sustainable Earth observation application platforms and promoting a digital space ecosystem. AO Earth Observation Innovation Europe has three main objectives to further empower data users such as the World Cultural Heritage Community. Another initiative, more commercially oriented, is the Copernicus DIAS initiative. DIAS standing for Data and Information Access Services, initiative launched this year in Baveno by the European Commission, initiative expected to revolutionize the way data is accessed, boosting user uptake and stimulating the creation of new business models. But remember my introductory words, dataism should not be our new religion. We should not be transformed in digital users, but we should become digital humanists. To use the beautiful expression used by Frédéric Kaplan, who holds the Digital Humanities Chair at the École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, and who conducts research projects combining archive digitization, information modeling, and museographic design. Why shouldn't the organizers of this conference not suggest to create as an operational conclusion drawn from the sessions, to create a European space data culture platform, bringing together space and culture stakeholders to support European cultural actors to better define and better use space data for the sake of culture in Europe and worldwide. And I conclude, we Europeans could propose this to the world because 
we should always remember that etymologically, we Europeans are the sum of Euris, meaning wide, and of Ops, meaning view, an open-minded people who has inherited from Lady Europe the ability to look at the bigger picture. Lady Europe, who, riding on the back of Zeus, this, disguised as a bull, so what is the most difficult to distinguish, the permanent features in the labyrinth of history, or to say it with the conference words, our culture and cultural heritage. I thank you warmly for your attention and for the time you will devote to the follow-up of this very civilizational conference. I thank you.